So let's look at our software for our robot. The hardware is such that PB7 to PB4 is to the right stepper, PB3 to PB0 is to the left, PE1 has the left bumper, PE0 has the right bumper, both positive logic. There's initialization, which is similar to all the other initializations we've been doing so far, where port B is an output, port E is an input. We will use a struct to define the components of a state. Each state will have an output, will have a time to wait in 10 millisecond units, and four next states. Again, the four possible next states are 0, 0 means we're okay, full speed ahead, 0, 1 means the right bumper just hit something, 0, 2 means the left bumper hit something, and 0, 3 means a head-on collision, both bumpers at the same time. So the indexes in this array correspond to the inputs that you have to respond to. Absolutely. An important thing about finite state machines, the reason it is so powerful is because there is a one-to-one -one mapping between the structure that we drew, the state transition graph, and this data structure that we will store in the computer. Every state had exactly one output, every state had a time to wait, and every state had four next states, shown here as indexes, depending upon whether the input is 0, 1, 2, or 3. So there is a one-to-one -one mapping. That means no more, no less information in this than the state transition graph. This data here completely specifies what the machine will do. We will store the current state in this variable called C state. So it will have a number between 0 and 9 specifying the state number that we are currently in. The initialization is to turn on the clock and the cystic and the ports and initialize the state to be the first state or state zero. And then we will repeat the engine over and over again. The first step is exactly like we saw with Dr. Yarabali's, and that is we're going to output depending on the current state. So C state is our current state, and so we're going to fetch the output field from that state and output it to port B. That will be one of the numbers we saw in the finite state machine. The next, to make it run at the speed we want, is we were going to delay for a certain amount of time. So if a delay of two will mean it will wait 20 milliseconds. So this will control the speed uh, at which the motors will rotate. Yes, so if we're waiting 20 milliseconds, that will be 1.8 degrees for 20 milliseconds. Next, we'll fetch the input. And so we're going to fetch the input from port E, bit 0, and 1. And so this variable here is going to have the values 0, 1, 2, or 3, depending upon whether we hit something or not. And lastly, we're going to change state depending on both the input and the current state. The current state will specify which one we're currently in, and then the input variable here, 0, 1, 2, or 3, will specify what the next state will be depending on the input and the current state. Okay, let's uh, look at the functioning of this robot in a real uh, setting. Yeah.